Well, North Battleford is receiving a boost to community safety thanks to a contribution of $770,000 from the Provincial Government Municipal Police Grants. The money will fund seven RCMP positions in North Battleford, allowing the RCMP to focus on priority areas and enable officers to play a more visible role in the community. The Municipal Police Grants have invested more than $109 million in the province since 2008-2009, with more than $5 million having gone to North Battleford. Well, the City of Lloydminster is implementing a policy around travel expenses. The move comes after the City's release of financial records dating back to 2011. It was revealed there were no spending limits for meals or general travel expenses. It's important that everybody knows what the policy is, and it's clear. This is what you get paid for, and this is what you don't get paid for, and uh, you're not wasting taxpayer dollars. If the policy is approved, the city would switch to a per diem system for city staff, while city council and senior administration would have to submit receipts. Monthly travel reports would also be in a requirement. An amendment to the policy would see the per diem change from $60 to $51 to meet the rules in place by the Canada Revenue Agency. Some of the staff might not be the most happy with me, but at the same time, uh, really it, it makes life a lot easier because now they're not going to have nine extra dollars on their pay stub where they took tax off of it as well. It's part of that whole question about transparency as it was referred to in the, in the discussion. I think it's important that we have ground rules laid out. There's, once you have a set of rules, you have something to work with, right? Now that's what I think people are looking for. The policy will be brought back to Council at their December 12th meeting. And the City of Lloydminster is freeing up some room for borrowing commitments. This after the purchase agreement for the Synergy Credit Union building fell through. At Monday's meeting, Council instructed the City Clerk to draft a repeal bylaw to annul the borrowing of $4.16 million to purchase the building. As part of the purchase agreement, the building was subject to certain conditions, including an inspection. The agreement was rendered null and void, but city officials would not elaborate on what conditions were not met. Well, some Bar Colony elementary students had a pretty unique experience. During a presentation from the kids' conservation organization called Earth Rangers, they got to learn about certain endangered species and meet some as well. In this week's Beyond the Classroom, we see the educational value these special guests bring with them. You can make a difference. That's the message to these students from the Earth Rangers. They travel across Canada visiting different schools, teaching kids about endangered animals, conservation projects underway across the country, and how to get involved. We actually visit about 800 schools every year, which is incredible. And kids have an innate connection to animals. So once we bring those animals in, it really gets them engaged. They learn a lot, and it's a great result. This interactive learning experience also ties into the school's science curriculum, but by far the most exciting element of this presentation is seeing the animals in person. We have Chavez, the Crimson Rump Toucanet, who is actually our newest animal ambassador. So this is his first national tour, which is really exciting because these are some of the first kids in Canada who get to meet him, so that was really exciting. Uh, we have a striped skunk, which is a lot of kids' favorites because everyone smells them and sees them at a distance, but you don't often get to see them quite that close. Uh, we had Leonard, the American Kestrel, who got to fly over the kids' heads today and we had Katiri the peregrine falcon who flew down the center aisle. I just love the excitement the kids get when they see those animals because some of them haven't had a chance to see them but also the educational value that they can have in order to protect them and some of the stuff so easy at home that we could do here in Alberta. As for some of the students the presentation left them feeling inspired. I think it was amazing. I loved it. I'm definitely going to go join it when I get home. I'm going to ask my parents. Yeah, I really liked how they let animals jump and fly around and it was just cool. Beyond the Classroom is brought to you by Lakeland College. Take the lead in environmental sciences. Choose from four majors at the Vermilion campus including the new water conservation and management major. The Lloydminster and Area Brain Injury Society received a donation of more than $1,600 from Curtis Anderson and the Courage Canada Trail Ride. The money will go towards the group's travel funds, which includes the trail ride in late May. Labus Executive Assistant Michelle Neufeld says the donation couldn't have come at a better time, as funding has dipped in the past year because of the economic downturn. So having this money from Curtis is a luxury really for the traveling expenses for our group to get out and, and enjoy the trail ride. A survivor of a traumatic brain injury himself, Anderson says it's a priority to contribute to Labus every year. Helping out other brain injury survivors and 
providing a trail ride for them to be around horses and other survivors. It's a big day for them and for me being able to give them that chance. Labus has received more than $9,000 from the trail ride over the past six years. Lloyd Minster is one stop on the way to the Grey Cup for Nissan's Rally of the Titans. The campaign pits teams from the west against the east as they travel the country and complete challenges. Along the way we're also having these breakfasts and uh, barbecues, giving back to the community. We're dropping off food donations of non-perishable foods at food banks along the way. The rally is also part of Nissan's kickoff project, which provides funding or equipment to struggling high school football programs. It does bring the community together, and especially the smaller communities. Um, there might be some youth that can't find their way, but then when they join the football team, it sort of rights the ship, and they become a part of something. Team West will be in Winnipeg by Friday before meeting Team East in Toronto for the Grey Cup. Sports is brought to you by Nissan Lloyd Minster, Titan XD. Come test drive the all-new Titan today. Nissan Lloyd Minster, your Titan excellence dealer. Well, the Holy Rosary Raiders are continuing to roll through Alberta teams, beating the Sylvan Lake Lakers 24-16 on Saturday. The guys are now one step closer to the Alberta Bowl. Bailey Nitty has more. The Raiders traveled to Sylvan Lake this past weekend, bringing home a win against the Lakers. They will now move on to the regional finals in Edmonton this Saturday. It was a good game. It was uh, it was it was very physical. It was uh, it was a good pace to it, and our kids were challenged, and it was it was good uh, for this time of year. It was a hard fought game. We made a couple mistakes on defense, and they had a really good defense as well. So our offense couldn't get going quite as fast as we would have liked it to, but we still came out on top, and that's a big thing. The Raiders have a tough job ahead of them now, and that is to stop the St. Albert Skyhawks at Clark Stadium in the regional finals. Just keep going. Don't look back. Keep going and have no regret. Just every time you're on the field with any play you're running, just give it your all and put a good week in this week and be ready because we got a good game this weekend. It's a rematch of last year's regional final where the Raiders came out on top 28-0. They're hoping to repeat last year's success. Well, they'll be well coached. Um, you know they'll have a balance of run and pass, so we're going to have to we're going to be ready to go. It's provincial semifinal, and you have to earn your way there. And they they did as you know same as us, so we have to be ready. Confidence is high this week, and practices are more intense. There's nothing more the Raiders want than to defeat the Skyhawks and climb on board the Alberta Bull bus. It's uh, a game that I've been thinking about for the last year, since last year, and going out in that final last year, and I've been chasing that ever since. And just have a real good, good week. I think we can do it. You know, we're here. Uh, we've got this far. We've got a good group of kids. If the Raiders advance to the Alberta Bowl final, they will take on the winner of the South, either the Cochrane Cobras or the Cardston Cougars, who will play each other this Saturday in Lethbridge. Bailey Nitty, Newcap Sports. And the Border City Blades speed skating season has started. Shea Holzinger, a coach and athlete with the club, is working to compete in the Can West Championship. Holzinger has qualified for Can West in previous years and ended up winning eighth place in the competition earlier this year in March. Can West is the biggest competition year this year. So um, skaters from Alberta and lots of other places will come and uh, go to those qualifying meets to try to do their best, skate their best and get in and hopefully win some medals. At 14 years old, Holzinger has dedicated her life to speed skating, while she's also taken on a coaching role for young skaters. Her goal this year is to earn personal bests and make it to the main event. It's super exciting. It's like a huge accomplishment when you make it. The Can West Championship will be held in Saskatoon at the end of March. And that's your first look at sports. Gerard Lampau has your weather details when we come back.